We're back with a coffee with Chris on K State Online. I know it's been a while, but we finally, you know, got Coach Lowry back uh, in action. And you know, after practices, it's been you know a couple weeks of practices now, like full on practices with a few scrimmages uh, intermixed with uh, workouts happening before that. So you've had a lot of time with the team. You know, uh, you haven't been able to be on the road recruiting, but how's this time been with you know your family and the team as a whole? I think it's, a, it's very odd because, you know, you spend so much time on the road. Um, that's obviously become a standstill where we're not even out at all recruiting. It's just videos, uh, live streaming tournaments because, you know, this, this spring and summer, AAU ball still actually went on and they still play um, a lot in the summer and they were able to, um, at a price, stream live uh, tournaments. So we got a chance to really – kind of do it old school, watch a lot of video people, um, watch high school, you know, huddles, accounts of, of guys playing in their high school season. So, um, you know, as far as that's concerned, you know, it's obviously really different, but it was good to, to really be 24 seven in Manhattan around our young guys. So, um, and I'm sure they, 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 the young guys don't know what it's like to not have us around all the time, but the older guys, do they, you know, they, they understand that we would be in and out, you know, a lot in the fall during this time, early September with recruiting. And then the younger guys think, Oh, they're going to be around, you know, 24 seven and, you know, be there for us every, every, every need we have. So, yeah, I mean, how, how have the young guys enjoyed, you know, being able to learn from you guys without, you know, most, like you said, most young guys, they're, you're on the road most of the time. So this is a little different. You get to be hands-on and, and show them the way that you like, you know, from the jump. And with this big group of, of freshmen and newcomers all together, that's got to be a, a plus. Right. And it's, it's obviously we, we, we um, have liked being able to work in small groups with guys again and mm -hmm. um, being forced to really concentrate on, on getting guys better every day as opposed to having the group, you know, the large groups right away early in the fall before season starts. And, you know, it's been good because we've done a lot of teaching and a lot of bonding with this group because we're with them all the time. And um, you, you've seen some, some real, some real growth with some of our young guys um, and our new guys just, just moving forward. A lot has changed obviously with being able to be in Manhattan a lot more, but now that you're in full swings with practices and stuff, before we get into individual performances from especially the newcomers and guys, you know, that have been there, talk about what the team has been like as a whole group in whole co cohesion together uh, on the floor in scrimmages, five on fives and four on fours. Well, the good thing is, is um, it's forced Mike McGurl to be a leader and it's forced him to kind of, um, be in the forefront now as opposed to, you know, being lurking about in the past. And now he's really had to focus on um, dealing with the pandemic, um, dealing with some stuff with racial unrest with our players, and then dealing with um, get, becoming a better player mm -hmm. and becoming the best player he can be at the same time. So um, those guys have done a great job and they've just been feeding to play basketball. You know, this is, you know, I've, I've never been told that you guys can't play, you know, in my life as a, you know, as a coach and a player, you know, you can just go hoop whenever you want it, you know, and, and for, for the pandemic to say, you, you guys can't do anything. You guys got to stay in the house. And, um, you know, if you don't want this sickness, you, you, you have to, your day to day has to completely change. And so to be able to do that through zoom videos, workouts early, um, to actually getting them here, to having them here and being in quarantine and not being able to do nothing yeah. and, and keep, keep keeping young men in the house and trying to keep them corralled and, and, and locked away um, is a credit to them because they did a very good job of doing what they're supposed to do to have a chance to play. Absolutely. So now, yeah, uh, I do want to break down, you know, one by one, uh, every, every player that is on the team right now and how they've looked with such a new group, and it's been a while since we last talked. So let's start with the point guard position. Let's talk about your guy, Nigel Pack, and what he's been able to do in practice so far. Um, Nigel's is gifted. I mean, I think that, you know, the biggest thing when you watch him is that he always looks like he knows what he's doing. 
you know, he's in, in, in control of, of, of what needs to be in control of at that position. Um, you know, he obviously can shoot the basketball. Um, he's got a great feel. And he, he completely understands what we're trying to do. And he's a guy you don't have to tell him things very, very often as far as how to do something. If he has a question, if he doesn't understand, he asks it, and then he gets it right away. So you know, for him to be able to, you know, as a high school kid, come in and, and compete at a high level and then obviously uh, make shots like he has um, is impressive. I know it's, you know, it's still, you know, uh, starting lineup is still far in the works, but does he look like a guy that's ready to play, you know, a lot of minutes right away for you guys? I mean, uh, he looks like a guy who's, who's you know, going to come in and compete. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what you want. You want to have competition at every spot. And obviously that point guard position is a huge competition battle going between him and Rudy. And, um, you know, there's no backing down from either one. So, the beauty of that is is that they're competing hard against each other every day, um, and the stats show growth, improvement, and uh, talent at that position. So now that you have really, you know, two point guards you can look to, I feel like something a little different uh, than in the past. What does Rudy bring to the table? Uh, is it a little different skill set than what Nigel brings? Well, Rudy is big and physical. You know, he's got great size. Um, in the shooting drills, Rudy has – just been phenomenal like his his, his uh, shooting is off the charts and, and stats for, especially from three um, and that's something that we know he can score the ball and do, you know he's big and he knew but we didn't we didn't realize how well he, he could shoot the basketball so to be able to have shooting production in that position from both players is obviously a huge huge factor moving forward and then you know Rudy brings that that smile and the love of the game every single day. You know, Nigel's a quiet assassin. Rudy is the, the energy and the brightness in the gym um, when he shows up every day. Absolutely. And then you talked a little about what Mike's been able to do, um, you know, mixing in newcomers and obviously veterans, the senior. Uh, is he going to be asked to handle the ball a little bit more as a senior, or do you still see him, you know, off the ball? I think Mike has improved his complete game. So, I think attacking off the dribble is something he, he'll definitely um, be better equipped to do. Um, you know, we, ha we have good ball handlers. Uh, so, no. So, just saying, is Mike going to be the point guard? No. Can Mike bring it up and initiate offense? Yes. Uh, but I think you'll see him more in attacking on the offensive end in the half court with the bounce uh, as well as shooting the basketball, too. So, um, you know, he's always been safe with the ball and doesn't turn it over a lot. So that that obviously he he's going to continue to do, uh, but he's he's obviously right now he's more aggressive. He's has more confidence, um, and his flow inside the game uh, is at an all time high. And as as a player that's going to be a senior, and looking for confidence and looking for leadership moving forward, he's he's exactly where you would want a guy to be if he's going to have a breakout year. Absolutely. And then Celta Miguel is a guy that coach brought up as one of your leading uh, turnover guys in practice. At least that's what it was last week. But he's also, you know, your leading assist guy. So what does he bring to the table? And uh, is he going to be asked to score the basketball a lot this year? Well, Celta's biggest problem is he's such a pleaser. You know, offensively, he's gifted. He can do all this stuff. And we had to, we had to you know, tell him stop throwing no-look passes to people, you know, he hit dudes in the face <laughs> and guys weren't ready for the ball. You know, I mean, he, he has good vision. He has great IQ. Um, but, but, you know, he's got to, he's got to hone in on, on really looking to get his own offense more right now. He's such a facilitator at times. It hurts him because he doesn't take open shots. He really tries to get to where he can make a big time offensive play. And most of them are passes. Mm -hmm. So I think people will be excited and intrigued when they see him. And then you see how physically built he is and see how smart he is as a player, how high his IQ is and his ability to uh, pass the ball. And then before we, you know, get to the big men and, and what they have to offer, talk about what Luke has, you know, been able to do with his injury and how he's progressed and how his spirits have been. You know, I know coach talked about it a little last week, but, 
it's, you know, that's something difficult, especially for a freshman to deal with, especially during the time during COVID and stuff like that. So how's he handled all of that? Um, you know, I mean, obviously it's tough as a freshman. You come coming in, you're trying to figure out and navigate where you fit in with the program on the team. And, you know, Luke is an extremely likable dude by, you know, he everybody on the team likes Luke. He's a cool, you know, he's one of those cool dudes. Like he just, you like being around him. He loves ball. Number one, he's a, he's a ball player. He, he, he's not a shooter. He's a hooper. You know what I mean? And that's his, how, how he carries himself. And for him to just be out is killing him. You know, because number one, he's never had a major injury where he can't play, mm -hmm. you know, and, and for him to be sitting out and him to have a, a timetable where he doesn't know and he can't pinpoint and say, OK, I'm going to come back this day. That's even harder, you know, for him. But, you know, obviously he's done a good job with his body um, and, and getting stronger. And I think that was what he needed to do anyway. And I, But I don't think he wanted to be hurt to be able to change his physicality. And you never... You never want to be, have to do that. But before that, you know, he was obviously, you know, having a great camp and, and doing well. And, uh, you know, we miss his his ability to make shots and his ability to move on offense. And, and it's just something that he's just had to learn to watch and, and really just suck it all in from a spectator standpoint instead of actually doing it as a player. And then one more, you know, from the backcourt, we do have to talk about, unless I'm missing someone, Dejuan Gordon, obviously coming back as a, a sophomore veteran on this squad. What does he look like in practice, and what is he going to be asked to do this year? Um, Dejuan is a kid, obviously, you know, he's one of those dudes who who um, came into college basketball, didn't know what to expect from it, um, learned a lot, and now it's time for him to, to, to grow up in his position. You know, he's got to he's he's got to continuously put great days together. Um, you can't do freshman stuff, have have two good days, one bad day. You know, with him, even though he's a sophomore, we expect every day to be a good day. And, and you know, he's made significant improvements shooting the basketball, um, significant improvements in playing the game and and just him learning uh, how to score different than he was brought up in the game of basketball. Um, as opposed to just being tough and, and scrappy, hard nose, and, and just finding ways to get baskets. He's learning where he gets his baskets from, how he gets them, uh, where are his spots on the floor he likes to score. Uh, and those, those things are important for a young player to learn those early and to figure them out and then be good at them. Um, you know, he should be a, a good defender for us, uh, and we expect – his energy and love of the game to really show more this year as he knows uh, more what he's doing. And that was a part of last year, um, not always knowing his job and not always knowing what he's supposed to do. I think we've been really clear with him of what we expect and mm -hmm. he's just got to do it. Well, uh, one more thing on him. I know last week he, we, we got to talk to him a little bit and he, he talked about how you know, he's going to let Mike be more of the vocal leader and he's going to, you know, lead by example. But I feel like last year, even as a freshman, I noticed stage one on the court was more vocal than even some of the other guys. Uh, maybe not as loud, but like he was still talking and, you know, able to keep, cheer his guys on even on the floor. So does he have that in him? And uh, is he just, you know, being more shy around the media as far as that goes? And because I believe he's probably more vocal than what people in himself might give him credit for. Well, he's very emotional, and that's that's the one thing um, that he's ha having to learn on a daily basis, which is to control that and to be even keel. So mm -hmm. he's he is going to talk. That's what he does. You know, <laughs> he's a he, he's a guy who uses his mouth to communicate a lot as a player, and he's gonna he's gonna really show it in his play, and that's what we we talk with your game, and, and that's the biggest thing that that he has to continuously grow and uh, show he can do. Now, he, he's doing – one thing he is doing, he has figured out how to, you know, get stuff done in practice. And last year as a true freshman, sometimes learning a system, you don't always – it doesn't always feel like you're having success. Uh, but now with him, you know, being a sophomore, he, he's shown improvement that side of it. All right, let's move on and talk about, you know, his, his other his, – his buddy – 
sophomore buddy now um, and another veteran on the team technically with uh, Monty Murphy. Obviously, I feel like coaches talked about how he wants to, you know, get him going more offensively in press conferences so far this season. So I guess what has he shown in practices and what kind of leader is he going to be to this year? Well, Monty, Monty, you know, pre-injury, we had a lot of expectations uh, for him that we saw early um, with him being the kind of the ultimate glue guy. Um, I think, I think Monty's going to grow into a Swiss army knife, do, do a lot of things good um, and nothing great yet. And I say yet, because if he, if he can get his, his best self forward, he can really be a, a type of guy who gets a lot done for us, both sides of the ball. And one mm -hmm. thing he is, he has great, great, um, IQ on the defensive side, knowing he's supposed to be tremendous helper. Everything we love in a defensive guy, he has that. He's got to gain the confidence as an offensive weapon as well. And that's where, you know, as a sophomore growing into that, having a lot more opportunities and just feeling like I'm not scared to make a play. You know, and I think that's where he's grown uh, significantly. Now, now he's going to be, a you know, a great um, – great defensive player, I think, you know, just with what he does and how hard he, he plays, what he's willing to do and sacrifice to help us win. And then talk about the other, you know, sophomore power forward, Antonio Gordon, obviously he's dealt with, you know, a lot with when it comes to uh, illnesses and such before the season. So how's he come along? And does it look like, you know, here's a chance for him if he wants to, you know, to be able to take, take a, a step and, and find some more minutes in this rotation. So what has he been able to do in practice? I think, you know, with him, it's just, it's just a day to day work and just getting better. Like the one thing that you don't have to, to do about him is motivate him to play hard. Sometimes you got to pull him back because he is going to go so hard um, that you, 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 it'll worry you. <laughs> Sometimes he, he just plays so hard and competes at a high level that he doesn't really understand when to go super hard, when to pull it back. And that's that's the one thing you love about him is that you can pull a guy back from playing hard. You can't pull a guy with no motor back. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't have a motor, he doesn't have a motor. It's hard to light a fire under guys like that. You don't have to light one undertone. You know, he's a guy who, who shows up, plays hard. Um, improved shooting is something that, that he's really worked at. Um, you know, he's a scorer in high school, and it was different. The matchups are different now. You have to you you have to guard that same person now, and um, I think he's learned that being a total player is more important than just being an offensive player. And um, he, you know, hopefully he can continue to get it together. Where physically we can put some weight back on him and and, and build him back up physically, where he gets big and strong to go along with how hard he plays. Because if he can if he can gain some some weight back and uh, and, and have physicality to how hard he plays, he, he's going to be a tough out um, for us just because of playing hard, shooting the basketball on length. And then the newcomer and, I mean, freshman, Siri Lewis, I feel like this guy's, you know, set high expectations for himself, just, you know, being able to see the way he carries himself and stuff like that. And, you know, he's got a lot of athleticism and what's been talked about. So what is what does he bring to the table? And is he going to be able to be a freshman that contributes right away? Well, the one thing, he's big and strong, you know, um, and he's very athletic. So, you know, good around the rim with both hands, that's something that you don't have to tell him, hey, you're on the left side, use your left hand. You're on the right. Those, those are things he came in um, with a pretty good skill set to be able to do. I think our biggest thing with him is, is just slowing down uh, and let the game slow down for him because he's – at times he runs around with his hair on fire and he gets in other people's way offensively. And he, and he gravitates toward uh, the ball when he should be away doing some other things. But um, Siri is, is highly likable. You know, every if you meet him, you're going to like him. Mm -hmm. And he has that on the court, too. And, you know, he's, he's, he's a guy who's, who's really – and he'll tell you, I was a five my whole life. I'm learning to be a four. I'm going to make mistakes. You know, and he says it to me all the time. Um, but I don't want to hear that. I want to see, you know, I want to see you get better. And he actually has gotten better. And that's why we're all excited about him um, because he is 
a guy who can stuff the stat sheet. Mm -hmm. um, he can bounce it a little bit to the rim. He's explosive to the rim. Um, he's a very good teammate, too. So those are all good things that you want in a young player. Uh, defensively, how are these newcomers coming along, um, especially, you know, down low? I know the philosophy you guys instill is, is, you know, sometimes tough to catch on with. But, I mean, being able to be around them a lot uh, has to help, I would think. Yeah, it's obviously helped that we've been able to see they hear the same teachings every day. Um, you know, without us being gone and they forget about it and then we're back again. But, it, you know, like like normally happens with a young guy, it's been a consistent, you know, hammer to the head with those guys about yeah. where they're supposed to be, where they're supposed to be doing, um, and 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 just just the toughness of every day of, of showing up with your, with your hard hat and your pail and just putting in a good day's work. And that's, that's what they really shocked us by being – um, those type of kids are wanting to work every single day. Uh, before we get into the posts, uh, one more question defensively. Is there anyone on the team right now that looks like they could be a liability on that end, or does everyone seem to be, you know, no. playing and putting in the effort? I think, you know, everybody is, is working hard. Like, that's mm -hmm. the key. Um, you know, the, the biggest thing for our group is, um, you know, they, they, they know where we finished last year. And that's something that's important. And we constantly harp on it. Like, you can't have last place effort anymore. You can't have yeah. last place um, mentality. You, you have to move the needle and move it up. And that's, you know, our approach with them. And that's why we have, you know, we're off today. And, you know, guys are in the gym, you know. You know obviously, they were off today to vote. Um, and guys voted, and then, you know, these dudes are in the gym already, and, and that's a great sign, um, you know, for, for our program, especially when the first two guys I see is Mike McGurl and Dejuan Gordon, because those are the older guys that have been here. And, you know, mm -hmm. obviously Mike's been on championship teams and, and big time, had big time teammates, and now he has to be a big time teammate. And part of it is bringing dudes to the gym with you, and, and that's good when, um, you see that happening. Absolutely. Uh, so, Davion Bradford, let's talk about what he brings to the table. Obviously, the seven-footer. Uh, I know coaches like to call him the the aircraft carrier. So, uh, how's he been out there offensively and defensively? Well, I mean, the thing about him, I mean, that, that dude has uh, worked very hard. And, you know, he came here in the summer. I think he was a little nervous about how hard stuff was going to be. And, you know, uh, he's exceeded all of our thing, all of our thought process with him as far as his conditioning. He ran the mile in 557, which is under wow. six minutes for a guy that big, uh, um, is, is very, very good. And that was his third time running it. So his first time he got 630, second time 615, then a 557. So um, our bigs have to go under six minutes. And he did that, which we were all shocked. We didn't. Our first time we saw him, we said eight, eight or nine minutes. This dude is going to be slow motion out here jogging. Yeah. You know, he actually tried, and I was like, oh, okay, I'm slightly surprised about the big fella, okay? Then the next time he did it, you know, he went, at 6.15, I was like, oh, really? Like, this dude is really – and then at 5.57, I was shocked. I had to give him a hug because that, that, <laughs> that's, impressive. that's impressive for a big cat like that to be able to – you know, move like that. And, you know, he, he, he's a people yeah. pleaser so much. Everybody's going to love him. He's a teddy bear. Um, he is, he is going to be a good player. You know, he has tremendous length size. Um, he, he really does a good job of taking what you've given him and apply it to benefit him. Sometimes guys will take what you give them and just do it. And they don't know why they're doing it. And they don't know, how it can help him. You give him something, he knows how to help himself with, with, with what you gave him. And I mean, that's a very generic term, but it's a very real term in sports. You can tell a guy, hey, you know, when this happens, um, block that guy out. And then he'll block him out and get the rebound too. There's mm -hmm. a difference. You can tell a guy something, a job, and there's more to that job. And without you really saying, expecting to know it. And he knows that he has to block out first and then get the rebound, even though we didn't tell him. So that's a very small thing, but a very big thing 
uh, when dealing with young young guys, especially bigs. I mean, all these freshmen seem to have, you know, maturity in them that, uh, you know, isn't usually what you see in a freshman. But I guess the guy that's, you know, as far as a newcomer goes, but been around the, the program longer than any other newcomer, Casey Eziagu, has he been running under su uh, sub six minute miles too? I mean, yeah, he, they all had to make it under six minutes. So, you know, now he's different. His body type, he's a big, strong, you know, good looking dude physically. Yep. Um, and, and, you know, for him, to, him to, to do what he did, and he ran it under, under six minutes too, um, it's, it, was, it was impressive. Because Casey's got 18s, and I think Davion's worth 17. So Bigfoot Rascals running the mile, man, it's, it's kind of comedy. But, you know, <laughs> to see those guys that last 100 yards, that last 100 meters, man, those dudes were cooking. And, and trying to get under six minutes because they know if they didn't make it, they're going to be there the following week uh, to do it again. And they were ready to be done with that mile. They were ready for, to put it away till next year. So, mm -hmm. you know, Casey made it too. So we, we, we can say the two biggest guys on our team um, did something that we expected to take longer from a, from it's a, and it's an emotional thing. It's a mental thing. Uh, and then it's the physical side of actually doing the mile. Because it means absolutely nothing to playing basketball, but it means mm -hmm. it's a mental warfare deal that, you know, coach uses to, to scare them. And, you know, guards got to be 530 and under. And, and, you know, when you have to continuously do that, it's not, it's not something you want to wake up on a Friday morning and <laughs> do, you know, in the fall during conditioning where you've already done a bunch of stuff that week. It reminds me when I used to run cross country back in the day. I don't even know if I could run a, under a six minute mile right now, if you ask me. But, uh, <laughs> but I'm glad the guys are able to get it done. So I guess, uh, oh yeah, what does Casey do? What is what is he going to surprise us, or what is what do people need to know about what his ability is like on the floor? I think you know he he's he's got great touch with both hands tremendous touch away from the rim it doesn't have to be right down he's got great touch in, in, in both hands um and he's explosive off the ground I think people are gonna you know really be surprised at, at how good he is he's he can pass um he's a very very mature young man he understands um what it is to be good and he wants to be that uh, he takes coaching, coaching, and um, he tries to, to to bring his best effort every day. And and he's a guy who's going to probably have to command a double team, you know, when he with, with what he can do physically. Um, you'll have to spend you know extra time, you know, helping who's who, who's guarding him, mm -hmm. just because he's physical enough to to get in spots where he's going to make you provide help. Yep. Well, one thing that, you know, Mac Maywin brought last year was a really good ability to defend the pick and roll. So what is, what is, does Davion and Casey have that in them to be able to, to do it to that level? Or are they still learning that? Well, Casey obviously, you know, has done it already. He's been mm -hmm. in college um, at, you know, as a transfer from UTEP, he actually did the hard thing, the hard edge um, ball screens and running back and finding your guy. So, Casey's proven that he can. Davion's, you know, always been the high school mode, run to the lane and, and turn around and find your guy. Well, mm -hmm. big guys shoot threes now. So he's got <laughs> – he's had to learn some different stuff. Um, and ball screen defense is going to be huge um, with his development um, of how much he can play and is he going to play. Because they're going to pick on him in ball screens. They're going to – they're going to now the, 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 the thing is they're going to have to deal with him on the other end but he's got to be able to defend the ball screen action. Mm -hmm. You know, he's worked his tail off to, to be better and understand where he needs to be. And he's just got to have the confidence to do it. You know, he's never had to do it. He's never been asked to do it or forced. Uh, but now the game has changed for him where the big guys run around in ball screen and you're going to have to be there to talk to your, talk to your teammate and provide support off the ball screen actions. Last post, I mean, the last guy that I think we need to talk about on the team individually is Carlton Lingard. I know he's dealt with a, a back injury, I guess. Is that is that right? And what's that yeah. injury looked? Yeah, what's that injury looked like for him? How long is he going to be out? 
uh, or is he back at practice yet? But we don't know how long he's going to be out. You know, obviously, Carlton can really shoot the ball with that size. And mm-hmm. Carlton was really learning how to, to play hard every day, every minute, and learning how – learning what we expect of him is at a high level every day. You know, and, and with his ability to shoot um, and block shots and be that length that he is, uh, he definitely is a weapon. And, you know, unfortunately, this back thing has, has set him back and he's not been able to, to get in practice here. Um, but, you know, just looking forward to getting him back on the court because, you know, with, with, the, with the size and the shooting um, and the ability to block shots, that those three things alone um, are huge, huge weapons. Um, and what we're trying to do. Absolutely. So, obviously, we get to run through the whole team. Um, how how excited are these guys to, you know, I mean, looking back, especially I would think Mike and Dejuan and Monty and Antonio, they look back and see what, you know, happened last year going 10th and now getting picked 10th again. Like, what is what is the mindset with these guys and, the, and getting the young guys to, to buy in to, you know, try to right the ship with the program? I think the biggest thing is that where we were picked last year, we we felt that it shouldn't have been that with with all the guys we had returning, all the guys um, that that were supposed to keep us where we needed to be. Um, it didn't happen for whatever reason. Now these guys have have have, have you have something to 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 hold against and say, okay, we know what happened, returning guys, and we can't let that be the the driving force and and what makes us good. And it gets us back to being respectable and 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 winning ways now, um, and, and that's the good thing about it. Um, the new guys are just they're learning from us more so than even the returners. You know, at this point, you know we have to be the leaders because we have so many new guys, and we have to show them the way, and we have to provide that, that leadership on every single day because we're spending so much time with them. Um, teaching them to watch film already is something that we hadn't really done until the season started, but now having a chance to really go through every practice with guys, because it would be hard. We weren't here. We were here for one, mm-hmm. you know, one workout and then two or three days gone. Then we come back the next weekend. And we just have to hear on the phone, you know, whichever coach was in town, how so-and-so was today. And now we, we, we've seen them all. We've seen every single thing they've done. And, and, and that's what this team needed. They needed our leadership uh, on a daily basis and coaches um, being around and Coach Weber being, you know, just so accessible to him, which is not normal. Um, you know, Coach has been extremely accessible to all those guys 24-7, um, and that you got to give Coach credit for doing that, allowing himself um, to, to be so transparent with them and instead of using COVID as a way of, of hiding from them. Yeah, um, he's been great with them, and and I think that's why um, those those new guys have really bonded with Coach the way they have. Uh, I mean, yeah. Well, last thing with COVID, as far uh, as practices go and stuff, Coach last week talked about how you know if someone's got a cough or a runny nose, you know, you make sure you keep them away. Uh, how has that affected you know being able to run full practices, and is that still happen? You know, even coming up into this week. Well, we, we've had several one-day misses where I don't feel good, and you got to report every single thing, and they're back the next day. Oh, you just got a cold. You just had a <laughs> stomach virus. You know, I mean, heck, you wake up in the morning, you know, you, you, I left my window open and woke up, had a sore throat. It was chilly. And I'm like, come on, man. Oh, nope, you're out. You got to miss practice one day. And it's just – you know, the next day you're back at work. So it's like, okay, did we really have COVID today? Or what is this? Is this regular? There's no regular sickness anymore in the yeah. world because, you know, especially in our, our line of work, athletics, they ask, ask you to report anything. Well, if you look at all the things that COVID is, that's the common cold, that's the flu, that's a stomach virus, that's bronchitis. That's, that's, that's a whole bunch of different things that used to be normal that aren't that are incorporated into into the, the COVID nineteen. So every little thing you have to, you know, move remove yourself from the team and you go get tested and then you have a twenty four hour period where we, you know, you just gotta stay away from the team and then the next day it's kind of a joke. Show up, oh he's he's good. He didn't have COVID. So <laughs> the Rona didn't get him as our players say the Rona got him. 
<laughs> you know, when guys are gone for one day or whatever, and then they're back and they said, okay, you're good. So, we're, I mean, we're just learning to navigate it. And we're just – and and coaches really hammered home and, and our trainers hammered home that anything you feel, guys, if we want to have a season, you got to report it. you got to tell the trainer. Um, and Luke Sauber's been great in that, that side where we've, we've had several guys – miss one day of practice because of you know not knowing what they had yeah but i guess no one's tested positive for for the virus since being on campus isn't that right yeah that was the good thing about it is that no one did so we we were i mean that's unusual highly unusual but that yeah. shows us that our guys want to play that shows they want to play and are doing the right things in the world like when they're away from us and and just being a student, mm-hmm. like a regular student, you know, going home Halloween, you just saw all those kids having Halloween parties and you ride around and, you know, you just hope our guys didn't do that. And yeah. it's hard to tell a, a college kid, hey, don't have fun. Mm-hmm. But they're here to do something else besides be a student too, that they had their own scholarship and that they love. And we just hope that we can continue to have their attention about wearing your mask 24 seven, because they never see us without a mask. And when we're down there with them, we have a mask, shield, sun, goggles or the glasses on. So if they see us really, you know, trying to do the right thing and and, and then they'll do the same thing. Football's a little different, but they've been able to, you know, to go without the K-State football, at least go without, you know, getting a game postponed or canceled or anything. But the yeah, basketball is different. I mean, how confident are you in playing, you know, every game and, and, uh, what does this season really look like? Well, I think the difference is that you, like, you know, they have a lot of position meetings that they have to do. They'll, so they have that interaction um, where we don't have like like that. But they'll think they, they play outside too. Mm-hmm. So all that stuff's going in the air. <laughs> like we're in, we're, we're in a building. We're right in each other's faces, hand-to-hand combat. Um, you're talking to your teammates. You're communicating. Uh, so that side of it is – if you got some, we're he's getting it. You know, just for the fact you don't have a mask on when we're practicing. Um, when we're doing five on five, anything we're going against each other, we don't wear a mask. Anything that's demonstration or, you know, shooting drills or technical drills, they have to have their mask up. But, you know, for for the coaches, we're 24-7, you know, offices, everywhere we go, uh, being around them, mask up and – you know, we hope to have a season, man. I think the NBA just having no issues in the bubble help clarify a lot about our sport. Mm-hmm. Um, now, the one thing that, that they didn't do was travel because it was in the bubble. That's the issue where, you know, hopefully when we get in the league, we can control more so than, uh, than not. In the non-conference where you, you're trying to figure out, can you trust um, a team to come in here uh, for a bye game and that they're tested and where were they at before they got here. And so those are the things that we we're trying to navigate right now um, as far as our schedule. And there's things on there, but that can change. We've seen that in college football that at any moment a game could be canceled. And hopefully for us, um, we only have the 14-day deal as opposed to the Big Ten's 21 or whatever they instituted in there. So it's a, it's a little bit different approach. And and, and we're just excited to be bouncing the ball, passing it to a teammate, talking trash, you know, being able to, to hoop every single day um, and being there for our guys. Because let's be real honest, you know, this is something that's unique that they've never experienced. They're away from home. Um, when they're not with us, they're always in their apartment, in their room or, or whatever. And it, that, that's not a normal lifestyle to just – be from the gym to your to your room or your apartment uh, and being told consistently every day, stay indoors, don't go anywhere, <laughs> don't let anybody come over to your house. Um, you know, it's, you know, some people who are friendly that like to make friends like Siri Lewis is an extremely friendly person. It's hard for him to not meet people just mm-hmm. because of how he is. And uh, it's tough, you know, to, to be shut in like like we are. Just a few more for you. I know we've been on for a while, but there's so much that I can talk to you about. So uh, same as football, a basketball has been given, you know, the scholarship, the free scholarship year to each player uh, if they want it, you know. So how's that changed the dynamic of 
uh, recruiting or anything else when it comes to, you know, the team? I think for people who have four or five seniors and have guys committed, it is different because then the athletic administration has to say, are we going to carry 16, 17 guys um, to do this year over? And I think that's the burden, but it's also the gift too, you know, because it's tough to, to tell, you know, we saw what happened to last year's seniors with a lot of guys not being able to finish their seasons and, and then being told, yep, your career is over. Like, I think the NCAA looked at that and looked at the chance of having to cancel at some point this season too and said, okay, everybody's got another year. So that's kind of how we're doing. We only have one senior, so it doesn't really affect us like it would affect other people. And we have a scholarship too. Yeah. So it would basically roll over into – Next year, we're, you know, if Mike McGurl came back, then he would have his scholarship anyway. But if we sign more guys, then obviously that changes everything. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, what's the excitement level going into the season? The schedule was put out last week. Um, so you have some games to look forward to. Uh, November 25th is going to be right around the corner. I guess the last thing we'll, you know, we'll talk about is, is what the excitement level is for you guys. I mean, it's, it's huge. I think our guys are want people to see them play. Um, whether it's on TV or the few that they're going to allow, uh, it's, it's just the ability to want to see them compete and, and play again. And it's been a while. Uh, so I think everybody's excited, coaching staff included. Um, we're just looking forward to, to what, what 20 and flipping over and hopefully 21 changes for the better mm -hmm. for everybody. Oh, yeah. Well, last thing I just thought about, the scholarship stuff, too. Does that change, you know, how quickly you might bring back uh, a Luke Kazuki or – I mean, also with COVID and everything, you might even you might have to bring him back at some point if he's able to go. What 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 will you do with his injury? I know you want to be precautious as well. We have no idea. We're going to do the yeah. best thing for Luke, period. And it has nothing to do with us winning games. It has everything to do with him and his mm -hmm. and his progression with his injury. All right. Well, Coach, thank you so much again for joining us here on K-State Online. Uh, this was a long one. I was, I'm was i really happy you were able to, you know, you know <laughs> let the fans see you again and uh, hear your perspective and how the guys have been doing. And I'm excited to talk to you again, hopefully before the season. Right. No doubt. Thanks, man, Grant. We got to do it again, man. We got to pump know. these out, you know, our fans. And I got a lot of texts and people ask me <laughs> when we're going to start doing these all the time again. And hopefully, you know, we can get that done. Absolutely. Let's, I mean, at least once a week. And then when the season comes around, we can, you know, start pumping them out as much as, as you want. So uh, really appreciate the time again, coach. And uh, we'll stay in touch. All right. Thanks, Grant.